Greetings, Dumelang. The South African government has put several programs in place to empower women economically, but there are still gaps because women-owned businesses are not receiving a lot of procurement contracts from government. There is also the same challenge in the private sector, where women-owned businesses are excluded in large sectors like construction and infrastructure. Is enough being done to give women-owned enterprises a fair chance in the economy? Are we doing enough to support the women who operate in the informal sector? These are some of the questions we will be answering today in this edition of Gender Space. I am your host, Kogezo, aka Kogi Siku, and thank you for tuning in. Babu Kheli, today we are discussing women economic empowerment and financial exclusion. Remember that you can form part of this conversation through our social media platforms, which are reflected on your screen right now. We are joined by Ms. Dibiela Mutubi, who is a commissioner in the Commission for Gender Equality, and also Ms. Mbelo Malibe, who is also a researcher here in the Commission for Gender Equality. Thank you, Bomme, ladies, for joining me. Thank you for having us, Koki. Okay. Okay, Commissioner, I want us to unpack, okay? Can you kindly just give us the landscape of women economic empowerment in South Africa? What are the trends? How sheba usko kieto ntafato ya basadi hosa muruoka ro Africa bora? Usheba na lani ana hayarun? Ufuma na basadi na kuniye telele haisali bantu ba chetulwa. Ibile ba kote loa huta muriyo. Mo ilion huri, musebeti wa bana inelo shoko mela malapa, shoko mela bana ba bana lo shoko mela balikan, lo shoko mela makrigo. Bana ba sanki karulo huta muriyo, bana ba sanki karulo kau sebeta kapa kahona hubali du kwebo. So ilion huri taba esa huri, ba kene huta muriyo katila ibazi. Me ha na ku inse ya hamu swa demokrasi ukala kwa balidi pedu hota huru basadi banga karulo muruo kati la ya huru ba ya hirua ibe ba ibe ba ya sebeta likati la huru ba balidi kwebo tseo ilinzabo na tseo ilunguru di kuke na kahari hu mo sebeti di contributor hota muruo kahutwa commissioner and thank you for that kibato iti kona nu Hore, this discourse here, women economic empowerment, how does it now relate to the CGE's mandate? Mola how sheba mala wamu tewa wa Africa borwa karulo ya 187. Ure ure fata elo relu commission ati katika nyaya bung ya hore re sirelete loho pami sa nseto pilati katika nyaya bung me mosele tuwa wa ho pami sa lo tsireletsa dikatikanyo ya bong ha o shebifela go gore basadi ba nke karolo boeta peleng ho sheba le gore basadi karolo eo ba e bapalang ho tsa moruo ke feng mme ele mosebetsi o ro yetsang gore re ntshetse pele taile o e uri fuwa nke molao wa motheo ke go sheba gore na karolo e basadi ba e bapalang ho tsa moruo ke fe ka gore re etse the investigative hearings kapa di puputo mo ileng hore re bitsa borame sebetsi ho tsa beleng hore ba nka karolo ho tsa private le ho tsa muso hore ba tlo ikarabela hore ana ke inso ba se etsang kiro ho tsa bonnete ba hore bomme ba nka karolo ke inso ba se etsang ha ba se ba ba hiriwe tsa bonnete ba hore ba phamiswa ka rong sebetsi lo re ke inso ba se etsang ho tsa bonnete ba hore ho latela procurement policies tsa bona bomme le bona we we recently learned about the 40% procurement yeah um, you know women owned businesses and then kebata hore umpelele about the research report that was commissioned in the commission for gender equality can you unpack that for us as you aware koki we are a constitutional state everything eri rang um, is, is based on the constitution. So in 2020, the president announced for 40% of all the government spend would go to women-owned businesses. What we found, Hori, the president's pronouncement was just a pronouncement and there's no legislation and policy that aligns with that. So how no Hori 40% ele 
the guy Warner because of the current state of legislation and the policies that are currently in place. Nevertheless, uh, we still found Horu, there was a drastic, drastic, drastic um, low uh, expenditure on women-owned businesses, particularly on black women-owned businesses. And that brings me to the third point, Horu, the segregation of businesses in, in the portal of government is governed by BE legislation. And so race and gender are subsumed under one category. Mm -hmm. So we cannot distinguish, distinguish between race, between gender, between youth and such and such. So that also brings us to the issue of uh, uh, policy and legislation is governing the way that data is collected and the mm. way that we understand uh, the numbers in the country. We are noting your research, okay? But then I want to know, and everyone wants to know that in this research, some of the women that you sampled and also some of the departments that participated. Can you say to us that uh, are these women thriving, you know, and is there potential growth for them to actually be established and be successful? Mm. Based on the findings of the research study, uh, there was very few departments, I think only two departments, which was the traditional um, Likokta. Those are the only two departments who performed in one year above 10% on procurement on black women-owned businesses. Apart from that department, none of them ever reached a high point at double digits, until it's zero. Majority of spend across the provinces, for example, were uh, in Department of Health, which consistently showed that they were spending uh, the highest um, in terms of procurement, but also not necessarily towards black women-owned businesses. So although they had the highest spend, it was not necessarily that those uh, that spend was going to, to women-owned businesses. We saw uh, stability in some departments over the years and also some stability uh, as it pertains to the juncture of the pronouncement. In other words, uh, when the president said said what he had pronounced uh, before that and after that the spending remained consistent in some departments. So we can see Hore there the, the, the pronouncement of the president did not really have much impact on the change in expenditure. Okay. All right, all right. Commissioner, we're about to break for an ad break now, but today to explain to us Hore, this woman economic exclusion, where does it emanate from? Well, uh, women's economic exclusion is uh, a patriarchal system. Mm. system. It's a patriarchal system. a Bomme baluke la horibe bona ba hlokomela mbalapa bomme baluke la hore ba dipende o bontate which is most most important mo ileng hore e entse bontate e be sechabeng ba bonwa ile bona the the providers kapa be ileng bona ba hlokomela mbalapa ba lokela hore ba etse bo jotlhe ba bona hore malapeng ho bana le tsohle tse hlokahalang and how sheba even le bueta peeling eh ba mi buso le fatsi ka 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 retso e be re boeta peeling ditabentsa mi ruo o fumana gore ha e sa le ntse yeteletswe ke banna fela e le gore ke bona ba etsang dikreto tsa gore eh sebopego sa muruo se lokela ho ba jwang le gore na muruo o lokela gore o nke direction e fe le gore ke di feng tse o eleng gore di lokela gore be di kateng muruo so ke bona e ntse gore bomme o fumana e le gore Empowering women economically is great path to gender equality. Let's take a quick break. Let's breathe. This conversation is really thought-provoking. We'll see you after the break. Welcome back to Gender Space, the show that explores all things gender equality, transformation and inclusivity. Today we're talking about the economic empowerment of women and their financial exclusion. Before we went, we went to the ad break, we spoke about economic empowerment programs that exist in the land. Komutupi. We mentioned the factors that lead to financial exclusion, okay? So now, I want you to tell Babu Khailukohai about these businesses that are owned by women. 
what is then the impact? Have you noticed some impact, pro progressive stances? Well, Oskoki, um, impact uh, this exclusion of women, uh, in particular the business in Sabon. Kehore, you would find that the majority of businesses are sadi, the hour, are the one sustainable. Wufumana uh, hore, the businesses sing at the sadi, hari cheka, particularly in construction and engineering. Hadi khono hore, di move up the ladder. And kitawete sa mashala ka registration ya CIBD. Okay. Mo ilung hore, ha register wa the business for grading. Mm. Who bat wa who schedule financial turnover yad business, each business if all register. Who schedule who 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 or financially they are excluded. Kalba kala hore. Le haba ya ho di bank ke kapa di institution se fananga di loan. Haba kunu fumana chelet. Kalba kala ho baning. Haba na di asset se lungo baka di tisa. Bari this is what I have. Ke 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 kaho na orifu fumana chelete kayo. Bohulu babon. Ba na ba mani mo ilung hore. Ba di kono misti bari ke debt capital. Elo mo you can't use this. Use it to access financing. So the business sabo na bohulu di awa. Baba mm. mbaa ba, 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 ba shinshile di stream za di business. Kalba kala wa nbaa wana construction man ngasiki ukhoni kalba kala huri. Di requirements ta CIBD hakuto kona wiki di meet. Ba enta bi ba ile kai ba weze ka ufela hu catering, ba weze ka ufela hu dilimini. Ei ili un huri. Inse iba konforma mwen mailu un huri. Eh, patriarchal tendencies and systems di ba ba ile teng. Therefore it means haba movie at all. So we are saying that this 40% is problematic, mm. this pronouncement, mm. because it's not um, eradicating, you know, or really making sure that women's uh, economic empowerment is fulfilled. And I just maybe want us to zoom in to the informal traders. Um, Bilo, can you maybe identify who are these informal traders? I can think of a hairdresser, but do you know of informal traders? And I know that in provinces, you know, it is different. But can you think of a uh, informal traders? Mm -hmm. But like you're saying, hairdressers are part mm. of the, that group of people, domestic workers who work in households. Although there's legislation and movement in that regard, they are still uh, left on the outside. Uh, women who are selling uh, fruits and vegetables, chips, sweets, ribabona, everywhere. You know, it's difficult. Women who are owning uh, tuck shops, they can't form part of the system because they are on, in the informal sector. Mm. And Commissioner, we saw that uh, during COVID-19, you know, um, it, 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 it exposed the vulnerabilities mm -hmm. of uh, women, especially women in the margins of the economy, specifically uh, informal traders, mm -hmm. because, I mean, they couldn't go online and now advertise their businesses because, you know, many of them, they don't understand technology. They're not technologically savvy. So maybe let's uh, think of ways of now how can really our government or even you know public policy influence and assist women in informal economy to trade and also be relevant to technology and also trade making making sure that they are making money to feed their families well ya pili ke ha muso o ka wa it's a review its policies because uh, most of the policies that we have are gender blind eh had he apply a gender lens, had he draft you. Mm. They do not even have interest uh, at heart. Uh, they do not show any uh, intentions 
to ensure that uh, women are being empowered. Mm. Uh, I want to believe who re, who review how the policies, making sure that the policies be intentional in terms of ensuring that they have a a bias towards women because mona ke bona be ilong uri they are excluded the most mm. and ke bona be ilong uri if ilore our bylaws dealing in particular with informal trade eh hadia apply a agenda lens ke bona be ilong uri they stand to suffer the most eh ha ilo uri di bylaws sa gona tse dilang ka uri na ba trader ho kae ba trader joang ba trader dina kondifeng ha di apply a gender lens then it means eh ba sa di bana be o ileng hore ba in the informal trade ba tlo dula ba ntse ba kotelwa ka le ba kala ho ba ni di khwebo tse tlokwalang ke tsa bona ke ka ona le kana go nya covid eh bo holo ba batho ba ileng hore ba ile ba sokola ha holo ke basadi ka le ba kala hore the majority ya informal traders ke bona basadi ke bona be o ileng hore go fumane le go khwebo tsa bana di akwa ba bang di khwebo tsa bana isa le di kwala kana go lo ona jo leje ha di soka di cry di reg go ro ka re di khona go di pick up e di boetse di sebetsa hape hape yes Although we are mentioning uh, maybe the darker side, but then do you agree, Bom Mehori, is there progress, you know, in making women thrive, in empowering women to thrive economically? The way Commissioner Willett and Kateng, uh, the first thing that she had mentioned, Ke who reviewed the policies of the government. Uh, at the moment, the public procurement bill is out for, for comment and uh, towards the government who check out what can they contribute towards transformation. Um, yes, there are measures and means that are starting to, to come into place, but we're moving Kapesi a slow tather. Mm. I don't progress immediately and uh, progress that is far reaching across the country mm. to the margins of the society, like you mentioned. And Koba Tumbaba Sokolang Tad. Yes, yes, yes. Commissioner? Well, uh, there is progress uh, because we, we now have a lot of women working. Uh, there is progress uh, in the sense that Honaje Renali di Huebo, so Ilung Rikisabasadi. But Jolok Hachulo, Reds Amaya, Kalibilo Lalunabu, more than Huri, Reapil, Reaming Kailung, Retapa Tapa di Stepping at Licking A one before it was a lot. How we shall get Amsalaka the pronouncement of President of 40%? Mm. How we have to a pronouncement? Our procurement policies had the pronouncement in swing. How to progress? Uh, gender responsive procurement policies. Mm. How, how can we have a pronouncement? Then it means the policies must follow suit because without policies, we are government departments, Barry, but our hands are tied because there are no policies directing us towards ensuring that uh, we realize the 40%. So they do not even move. Joali, progress eating impa haibona hali kalba kala hubaning ritsama ya kamunye bu ribe rifishele man moilung ririya. Basadi, Carlo Baba Palang, Hosamuru, Yabona Hala, Rakahona, or Remole Cayon. At the moment, honestly speaking, there is nothing to write home about. You heard it from the ladies in the studio. Let us go to another commercial break before we continue with today's conversation. Women, economic empowerment, and financial exclusion. That's what's on the table today. Stay tuned, don't go anyway. Hello and welcome back to Gender Space with myself, Kogezo Siku. You can lodge a legal complaint with the CGE by calling our hotline 0800 You send your complaint by email on genderinquiries at cge.org.za. Today we are still talking about the economic empowerment of women and their financial exclusion. With me in studio to help unpack the topic in the CGEs, uh, is in Piloma, Libya, and Commissioner Dibiela Mutubi. So, Commissioner, 
let's go back to our conversation. I want you to tell us what would you like government to do to eradicate this plight of women, economic empowerment, but particularly their exclusion? Number one, uh, like I had already said, creation of policies uh, with the intention of ensuring that uh, there is gender equality. Uh, creation of environment enable ambassade or participate within the economy uh, by government and without also overlooking the private sector because they have a role as well to play in ensuring that uh, women are participating in the economy of ensuring that they do away with the exclusion yes. of women within the economy. And also creating a support system for women to participate within the economy. A support system where you'd have your uh, mentoring uh, 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 programs, where you would have your incubation programs mm -hmm. for women as businesses. Because at the moment, all of these program, programs and policies are very general. They, you, the gender is assumed within these programs. Diba specific and bias towards women to ensure that Libon, Banka Karolo, Kaharehu, Muruo, and Baba Empowered. Okay. And now uh, going back to the commission, since both of you are from the commission, so I want. Uh, to maybe expand on this conversation to say that, how is now the CG influencing a policy? We can go with Mpilo and you can conclude with Commissioner. Uh, the, the Commission uh, has different units in the organization. Uh, like you mentioned, Komatomong Nake Keberka in the research unit. Mm -hmm. So part of when we do research reports, the findings that are declaring, we come to conclusions, and then uh, we also have recommendations for the departments that we're working with. For example, uh, we had recommendations uh, on this report, yeah, 40 percent towards yes. the National Treasury. We also had it towards the Department of Women. Uh, we also had uh, the study that was mentioned as well, any programs that women, uh, we had recommendations for CETA, and those organizations um, uh, have the responsibility to undertake those recommendations mm. and implement them. Furthermore, we're an institution that reports to Parliament. So the report of Arena, are one of the avenues that we use uh, to influence policy and legislation through our reportage to Parliament. Okay. Commissioner? We also conduct uh, investigative hearings which assist us in identifying uh, policy gaps. And also uh, the commission also uh, identifies the need for policy review, the need for policies to shape and inform uh, the different uh, 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 spaces uh, within government and the private sector. That was a fruitful conversation, and I hope Babukheli Kwakhai, they've learned a lot. Remember that the conversation needed, it does not end here. Let's continue talking in and out of our social media platform visit the CG social media platforms. You guys already know the handles. And if you don't, they are at the bottom of the screen. From me, Kogezo, Kogisiku, it's goodbye and see you soon. Good night.